In this example, we're told that we have a two-dimensional flow field given by the following velocity field. So you can see it's unsteady, which means that in general, the streamline, streak line, and path line will all be different. And uh, we're asked to find the equations for the streamline, path line, and, and streak line. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. So starting with the streamline, we know that the slope of a streamline at any point is equal to the slope of the velocity vector. So that'll be uy over ux. Here, the uy velocity component is just 1 because it's right up here. It's just a, a value of 1. And then the ux component will be this value, so 1 over 1 plus t. All right, so now we have a differential equation that we can solve. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll um, just bring the, the, the t will keep on the y side and the x will keep on the uh, just by itself. So what I mean by that is we'll have, um, I'm sorry, I, I'll do it the other way. So we'll have dy is equal to 1 plus t times dx. Sorry about that. So I've, all I've done is just rearrange this differential equation to make it like that. We'll go ahead and integrate both sides as we go from some initial position to some final position. Notice that I don't bring the, I don't keep the t inside the integral for the x because this is a function of t, not a function of x, so we can pull it outside the integral. So this will just become y minus y naught is equal to 1 plus t x minus x naught. So that's our general equation for a streamline. So this holds true for any point, x naught, y naught, and any time. But we're specifically interested in through the point 1, 1 at t equals 0. So we want to know when x naught, y naught is equal to 1, 1, and t is equal to 0, what does that line look like? And that'll just be y is equal to x. So that's our streamline for those conditions. It's a, through that, a particular point, 1, 1, and at a particular time, t equals 0. But if you want it in general, it would look like that. Okay, so that's the streak streamline, and that, that one's pretty straightforward. Hopefully there, there's nothing too challenging about that. The main thing that you have to remember for a streamline is that the slope of the streamline and the slope of the velocity vectors are the same. Okay, let's go ahead and do the path line. So for the path line, the governing equation is just that the x velocity is just dx over dt, y velocity is dy over dt. That's pretty straightforward. Again, the x velocity is... 1 over 1 plus t, that's the x component of the velocity, and then the y component is just equal to 1. So we can solve those differential equations. Let's start with the x one first. One side we have dx, the other side we have dt over 1 plus t, and then for the y one we have dy is equal to dt. So we'll solve the x one first, and uh, I'll, I'll have to do it down here. So we integrate both sides as we go from x naught to x, t naught to t. Same sort of thing for the y differential equation. So on the left-hand side for the x one, we'll have x minus x naught. And on the right-hand side, that'll be a natural log. Natural log of 1 plus t all over 1 plus t naught. Okay. And then for the y equation, we'll have y minus y naught is equal to t minus t naught. So that's our general equation for the path line. And specifically, we're interested in the path line that goes through the point 1, 1. So again, we have x naught, y naught is equal to 1, 1. And we want the, a path line for a particle that's released at that point at t equals 0. So what that means is... For path line, we're trying to track an individual fluid particle. So we want the fluid particle that's passed through that point that was released when t naught is equal to zero. Okay, so it's 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 for that particular particle that passed through that point when at a particular time t naught is equal to zero. Okay, so I'll write that down when t naught is equal to zero. And so for that particular case, we'll have x minus 1 is equal to natural log of 1 plus t all over 1, and y minus 1 is equal to t 
minus zero. So that's our set, that's our equation for the path lines. And this is a parametric equation, so t varies here. What this means is you plug in a particular, you just plug in different values for t, and then you find out what your x and y values are, and then you can plot it. Okay. The idea again here is that we want the path line for a single fluid particle that passes through that point when t naught was zero, and it'll trace out its motion as time varies, right? So it will just get its motion as the time varies. The single fluid particle moves along in time. Okay, now when we do the streak line, we'll start with the same form of the differential equations as what we did for the path line. So we'll get the same solution here. And for the streak line, we want the streak line going through that same point. But here, for a streak line, it's many different fluid particles. So for a streak line, they all pass through this point x naught, y naught at different t naughts. So here, the t naught is the parametric variable. The, and then we'll get the streak line at a particular time. Okay, so let me write this down. So we'll have x minus 1 natural log of 1 plus 0 all over 1 plus t naught. Let me get rid of the 0. And then for the y equation, it'll be y minus 1 is equal to uh, minus t naught. So this is our streak line. So for a streak line, oh, let's see, did I do that? correctly. Let me just verify. Yeah, I think I've got all that correct. Okay, good. So for the streak line, it's the t-naught that varies because we're now we're dealing with many different fluid particles and each one of those fluid particles passes through x-naught, y-naught at some different initial time. So we're getting the, the path line at a particular time t here t is equal to zero. Let me, actually, let me make a note of that. Here t is equal to zero, but t not uh, t not varies because all the different times that the particles pass through that point are different. For the path line, t varies, but t not here was zero. It's a particular fluid particle that passes through that point x not y not. So you can see just in general that the streamline, path line, and streak line are all different from one another. And that's not to be unexpected since this is a an unsteady flow, so they're all going to look a little different. If we plot this out, you'd have to do it numerically. Um, at least I would. I would just plug in the different values for t and t naught, and then plot it all out. And I'll just kind of sketch what it looks like. So here's x versus y. Here's our point x naught y naught is equal to one. So that's kind kind of our starting point. The streamline was just uh, y is equal to x. That's what we found through that point. And of course, you can always go backwards as well in time. And then the path line, when you plug in the values for that, let me draw that in a green color. That looks, I think it looks something like this. You'd have to plug in the numbers to see exactly what it looks like. And I, I didn't do that uh, here, so I don't... Um, Unfortunately, I'm just kind of sketching it based on some previous work I did. And this would be what the streak line looks like when you plug in the uh, different values for t naught. So you can find, you can plot those lines using, you know, any sort of plotting program like Excel, for example. And then, again, if you're doing the path line, you just choose different values for t. And if you're doing the streak line, you choose different values for t naught and then see what the x and y values come out to be and then plot those down here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and end our example there.